Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The title of the, the program tonight is uh, Ethics and the Islamic Movement. Uh, the other night I was talking about uh, this one? Yeah. The other night I was talking about uh, uh, certain subjects and I said that uh, if, if these, this system comes up with anything that uh, diverts, that tries to uh, influence ethics, then that will be the, that will be the uh, automatic sign. It's like a, a, a stop sign, go sign, turn left or right. If I got, if anything comes up with me personally, or I start feeling or thinking about uh, going against the ethics that we talk about here, basically we live by it, then I would know and it's wonderful because that would mean whatever the little operation of mumbo jumbo they did, right? If I come up, and I don't want to talk about it, this is just an analysis here. If we come up with anything that uh, would affect our ethics, they could affect uh, this, that, other, there's no problem. But ethics, if it's anything that relates to ethics, this would be a red flag for us. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, oh boy. In other words, they could, no matter what they spent on that operation over there, and they just have $8,000, you can't cut nobody's head open for no, uh, no less than two, three, four hundred thousand dollars at least. The brain stuff. Shoot, I had that more than that for 20 years ago at Heinemann Hospital in Philadelphia. Just for blood clots, they give you all them tests and they do all, they charge you for everything and if they give you a, a Tylenol, that's 35 or 40 bucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, and you notice they pill you to death thing. Of course, I didn't take them all. But uh, anyway, so now, do y'all, anybody remember uh, Hubert Harris? Hubert Harris, he was a good brother. Back in the 20s, he was one of the fathers of the Black Liberation Movement. He was mainly socialist, like, but he was too black for the white folks. And he worked with Marcus Garvey. He, he was a pioneer and all that. But you never hear about him. The Black Renaissance, or this, that, and other. You never hear about Hubert Harrison. And so that's because he stuck to his stuff too much. Not too much, but like he should have. He died at an early age, though. I think he died in 1927. I think he was 34 when he died. Something like that. I, I, uh, I want to mention a few things that relate to these subjects like that. Since we've been here, we've been talking about the so-called alternative media those people who are apparent gatekeepers. And if you look at what we're dealing with, if you weren't an optimist, you would be overwhelmed because uh, you would look at the situation and say, we're 100% encircled and surrounded, which actually we are here. We are, we always have been, and that, there's nothing new about that. But all the people 
that we come in contact with, that are left over, that continue. See, the good people are hassled so much that they look at it, they say, this is too big for me. That's what most of them say. Like some of my friends that get out of prison, they've been in there a long time, they say, I'll just stay with my woman and maybe get me some kids before it's too late and uh, my other kids are grown and dead. They, they don't volunteer, they don't say I give up, I quit, but that's what it, that's what it adds up to. Because they do a mathematical, uh, they do a regular uh, analysis. They do keep score. They keep score. Like uh, some of our people deal with it in many ways. I, I just mentioned one of our friends. He was strong in the black liberation movement. He became a very good imam and all of that. He told me in 1983 when I was visiting where he was, he said, uh, I said, man, it's all the people down here talking about Asalaamu Alaikum and all that. He said, they're not with me. So you can imagine who I'm talking about. So he knew then but now, the man is uh, very, uh, I won't say subversive, but look at it like this. If you have challenges and obstacles that internally you don't believe you can get over, you know, you don't believe you can reach that. You may have tried before, big time. People may have turned against you. Not turned against you, they just forget you. You know, to a lot of people, they don't forget that. They don't forget trials and tribulations that people put their family through and all of that. So, there's a type of I almost call it movement suicide. It's very tricky that you allow something to happen that takes you off the scene, maybe put you in jail, maybe get you killed. Because you don't believe, you, you look at those numbers and those people, you know, like what we was talking about, you look at, you, eventually you come to the point that, man, everybody is one thing or another, right? And so, that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that's something. If you're not really optimistic, if you're too analytical, if you're too reasonable, if you use too much alcohol over inspiration, if, if you're not naturally uh, fired up and inspired, and, and, and if you don't like, what, if you want results for what you do, and you see yourself totally surrounded, the proof of the surrounding is what happened when things happen, if we know what we're talking about, right? When things happen, everybody just looked and you know, prayed and that's about it, right? Hey, 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 you talking about sad. That's exactly what was expected. You see what I mean? Okay, now, I don't want to dwell on this too long, but there is a real possibility of self-elimination. Now, I don't do the same thing with uh, 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 Imam Lukman, but 
he had a way of carrying himself that there are certain things he couldn't do doing the things he did. Right? The proof is right here. You can't do certain things. You can't go, to, go pick up TVs or get them. You can't do the, any of that stuff. Maybe in the game they hadn't evolved enough to know that if you're going to be on front street like that, well, selling dope, we call it clean. You got to be clean. I'm clean. If, you, if something come in here, you put it on me. That's all right. You didn't put, that's yours. It ain't mine. You mean it and you, you willing to deal with whatever come up. But you're not going to have anything like that, right? You're not going to go and move anything by anybody's... Uh... Why? Because everybody, not everybody, but 98% of the people is whoever they are. And we know that. So those two examples have something to do with not care, but strategic management under conditions of repression. What is that and how does it work? Are those people who they who they've always been, do they act like what they do? Therefore, what is your perimeters? What, 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 what can you do? If you can say anything you want about Zionists and about da 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 then what is the cost? It's a cost. Right? It's a cost. It's just, you know, this thing right here, talk about Steve Emerson, Investigative project catches radical Islamic cleric on tape supporting terrorism. He's talking about Sean Hannity. That they caught me. This damn television that went all over the world. Every little write up they did on me is like if it was at a demonstration, we caught him saying such and such. You know. It's like they they investigated and they did a lot. They investigated nothing. They just turned on the television and there it was. And then they want to write it up. Now, that was a book. I, I didn't find the magazine, but I got some of the... Uh, this is uh, the lecturer, Abdul Malik Ali. These are good, clear pictures. This is about Abdul Malik. They call him the lecturer. It goes on and on and on. He's part of Asab Kun. Uh, he spoke at MSA West, UC Berkeley. Remember now, at this time, MSA West was as big as the MSA almost. They had California, they had uh, Oregon, <coughs> they had the state of Washington. And then they picked up Arizona. MSA West was our snitches challenging the MSA, Muslim Student Association, which is the biggest organization besides ISNA in America. They're all over. That's where ISNA came from. MSA, Muslim Student Association. He was their man. He was their gatekeeper. Remember we called it, uh, what did we call it? Uh, that Oakland was the, uh, not gatekeeper. Oh, the clearinghouse. Clearing. Clearinghouse, that's what it was. Clearinghouse. It was. Because in order to, if they had all the FBI agents and all the NSA doing stuff individually, they would be stumbling over each other. So they have to run it through. One person has to, to run that. Okay, now, now they got Mukhtar doing it. That's why we got it so good. The guy says, an idiot. Hey, man, you don't know how good that, um, well, no, he's an idiot, but that fool will shoot you. The white man told him, you find a way to shoot that nigga. 
And he will do it happily. If he busts you upside the head, right? And that's as far as they could take that situation. And they thought that I would respond another way and give them the opportunity. Because the police look at it, Mukhtar look at it like, this man is under 24-7. If he goes get a gun, then we know. If anybody bring him a gun, we're going to know who brought him the gun. We gonna, in fact, we're going to send him. This people come to me every, all they want to do is give me a gun. Give me a gun. I don't want no gun. Why I don't want no gun? Because I don't need no gun. Right? Nonviolent resistance means that's what we're doing. That's where our other people went a little, can you see where I'm he headed? They missed that part. You don't, when you're dealing with boss man, it ain't no violence. He didn't conquer violence. He, he makes violence. His highest achievement is getting niggas to kill each other. When he do that, he just happy as he can be. Right? That's the last thing we would do. Nobody has to worry about us, our community, having anything to do with that at all. That's what we say every week, and that's what we mean. That's exactly what we mean. We have two examples to show you what uh, any, any diversion. No, we don't have no. We have 20 or 30. We have paintball people. We got, man, we got so many. Anybody that made any slip up, right? They was gone. What's illegal about paintball? White folks do it all the time. But some of the brothers used to come here, they swooped up and they were off to the paintball penitentiary. They used to come here. The brothers. Some of them went up in the hills of Pennsylvania. I said, I'm not going up there. I don't want to go up there. I don't need nothing up there. Well, the brother uh, in the Sunnah and the brother, I said, I don't care what he's in. I'm not going up there. And off to jail they went. But Mellow Yellow didn't go, and the, the big world police that invited everybody, they didn't go. I'm not trying to say that it's a lot of experience, but it is. We have to be, there is, there has been some experience in this avoiding different things. And not avoiding them because of uh, uh, not trying to achieve martyrdom, but if you just go shoot yourself in the head, that's not martyrdom, that's suicide. A suicide. Or if you just put yourself in a position where somebody else do it, and you know that's what they're up to, that's another form of what I was talking about before. If you look at the overwhelming odds, Japanese used to do it. And you remember the Japanese would jump off cliffs, they would do everything, uh, commit Harry Carey. Mm. That was a uh, what was that movie? Not Flags of Our Father, but uh, the other one. Flag. Yeah, it was Flags of Our Fathers. Clint Eastwood did it. Oh. You remember that the movie when they was Iwo Jima? Yeah, I remember. I, okay. I didn't see it. But, but the Japanese that. were in caves. Mm -hmm. They was taking the grenades and blowing themselves up. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't blowing myself up. I'd go out and get and keep the head of cracker there. But it was because they didn't see any way, no so they, would, they didn't see no opening, so they would do the honorable thing to kill themselves. That's short-sightedness. Or hope, openings or hope. They didn't have, they didn't see any, uh, they was cut off. They was cut off and they, uh, they was being grind, grind, grind down. Mm. And so they committed suicide. They blew themselves up. And the Japanese is famous for that. Mm. Jumping off cliffs, everything. Uh, 
kamikazes, okay. you know what I mean? They, they just into that. Okay, part of it is good, but the other part of it, you want to make your enemy pay as high a price as you can. He's trying to make you pay a price. That's what he's doing to you. He's trying to make you pay a price so heavy that you won't want to do it. He do it all the time with everything. Everything around here, what the, 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 the price, we're going to make the price, go to hell. Who are you talking to? Nobody cares nothing about you. If you don't have an attitude, you can involve yourself in self-suicide. That's what I'm trying to do. You, you will, uh, it goes back to if you believe you can, you can. If you, if you don't believe you can, you can. Something like that. You can't. If you don't believe you can, you you might stumble up and do it, you know, get lucky or something. But that belief about that you can do it is, is the cardinal principle for uh, your reality. I can do it. We can do it. We got it going on. So, a lot of that comes from being, see, the brothers are not, uh, they're not off base, they're, they're on base, they're analytical, they're, they're mathematical. So, well, they got so many million people, we got three, we, can, we have no chance, right? Mathematically, it's correct. In circumference of we are surrounded. There ain't no nothing coming out of here. No air coming in, nothing going out. We are surrounded. That's where certain training comes in. You have to train yourself to like your job. Not only liking your job, but having fun doing it. Have to train yourself to have fun doing it. The other thing is, you know, way Martin Luther King and all those people trained themselves to be nonviolent. They, you remember the white folks that he spit on the niggas and that, and vice versa. They would be having training camps. I think Reverend Lawson, somebody like that. They were training to be nonviolent, training for sit-ins. They were training for that. Okay, what happened in Oakland, they did not